Hey folks, Rick here from Lala Farm. Uh, we did some chick uh, installs last week. Unfortunately, we had some video problems. We had to order some additional chicks anyway. So those were ordered. We got those in today. So we're going to retry uh, this with a different camera um, and hopefully get a better outcome uh, with respect to the video. So what we're going to do today is Kimberly's going to do uh, install of another roughly 50, 60 chicks or so uh, into uh, another stock tank uh, that we're using. But I'll kind of update you on what we have from last week. Uh, from that install um, and can kind of show you compare and contrast what that chick went through in one week I mean they're much larger they're already beginning to feather out on their wings so hope you enjoy the video uh, press the thumbs up if you like the video and uh, mash down the the bell button to get future uh, future notifications of this and uh, let us know that you like the channel um, thanks so what are you doing when you first get the chicks, you have to get them out as quickly as possible so that you can get them hydrated. Um, the yolk um, inside the egg, once they hatch, they have about 48 hours um, before um, that, that the yolk will um, hold them over so that you can get them, uh, they, so they can ship them. So they ship, ship them out the day that they're hatched. So the next day, as soon as you get them, you want to get them out of the box and introduce them to a water source so that they can get hydrated. Um, and then they'll just kind of find the feed on their own. Once they learn to drink, and once they see where the water source is, they'll just come up and start drinking it. But you have to introduce them to it. Um, the, chick it the chicks, though, they'll, they'll find the feed, and once one does it, they'll all do it. You just kind of follow along with each other. So all I'm doing is dipping their beak in the water until I see him taking a drink, see how he tips his head back, or she tips her head back and swallows. Um, that's just so that they can get hydrated as quick as possible. These chicks were going into our new um, chicken coop that's being built out actually off the back of the barn that goes out into our pasture where we keep our goats. Um, we do, we're going to be doing pasture rotation and having the chickens um, in the pasture with our actual um, other livestock, um, which will eventually be kuni kuni pigs and um, some meat cattle, um, allows the, the chicks themselves will help control uh, parasites and um, such as lice, mites, ticks, uh, and even the um, worms that are um, impact the different uh, livestock that we'll have on the farm. Look at this little one. Isn't she pretty? We got a few different ones this time than what we have gotten in the past. So. It'll be interesting to see how they grow out. band on it? There is not. <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> so some of these, you heard me ask Kimberly about a band, some of these will be shipped with a rubber band around around one of the feet and what that does is it allows us to determine what that chick is. They do that on chicks that are really really difficult to differentiate uh, from one to the other. Uh, and they do that at the hatchery. Now these chicks are shipped to us same places as we've always gotten them. So this is our fourth or fifth uh, generation of chicks that we have that we've installed and they all come from the same hatchery um, um, up in uh, up in Ohio and they come to us by mail order. I think they're eating and, already. Uh, 
see they've already figured out, Kimberly's introduced them to the water source. And they're already down there figuring out where the food is. Like she said, they've only got about 48 hours of substance from, um, from the egg yolk that they hatch from. Uh, so it's pretty important to introduce them to water and to the food source as quickly as possible. So I think this is about 50 or 60 birds that's going to go into this stock tank. And by tomorrow, right now you see the level in there, that'll be down to about two-thirds of, of that feeder. Uh, they eat a lot and they grow very fast. So I will, before we finish this video, I'll show you the ones, the size of some of the ones that we installed last week compared to these ones that are going in um, today. Um, they ship these in this box. And um, you, know, you would think <laughs> that you know shipping them through the mail would be um, you know dangerous. It's not. They um, they put this padding in the bottom to help keep it clean. This one didn't have any chicks in it. They usually put um, depending on your order. Um, if you uh, get say 20 birds they'll come in a box about this big and one of the reasons why they pack them so small is because with them all clustered in one box it helps them to maintain their body heat because they have to be kept at a certain temperature um, because if they get if their body temperature drops down they go into hypothermia and they'll die and it's quite a warm temperature that they have to maintain yeah they for the first week it's about 100 degrees is what they have to be maintained at. In fact, if we were to purchase these, we've purchased chicks in the fall and winter. And again, coming out of Ohio, uh, it is cold in the northern states. So these are shipped with a heat pack underneath the straw substance that's in the, that's in the box to maintain the chicks at 100 degrees during shipping. So they may, they're maintained at 100 degrees for the first week, and then after that, they drop down about five, the need for heat drops down by about five degrees per week. Um, so what we will normally do in this particular um, case itself, we've got a, a thermometer uh, that we will stick in here just to make sure that we maintain this at the right temperature uh, using the lamps that we have. So we've got two different stock tanks. That stock tank down there has what's called the sweeter heater. Um, uh, and that is a really uh, excellent product, a little bit expensive, so we only have one of them. Um, but what that does is, it is it's not a light bulb, it's an element that's inside of a plastic uh, encasing that keeps that approximately 100, a little over 105 degrees or so right underneath the heater. And then we just move the heater up and down over the course of the next month to main to, to drop that temperature down from 100 degrees to 95 to 90. Um, by the end of the first month, they uh, are should be pretty close to being fully feathered out, and that's when we will really let them out into the coop, and they will take them out of these out of these uh, stock tanks. Uh, they'll be in these tanks for the next month um, while they feather out. So we'll be watering them. We will be feeding them uh, in this tank. Where this lid over here, where this sweet heater over here um, has the sweeter heater in it, this tank is going to have what we used to use, which is um, a good old fashioned heat lamp um, that will um, sit above the cover. So this whole assembly that goes on and then we will just adjust the heat lamp up and down depending upon how hot we need uh, the inside of that stock tank to be. Uh, so is that all of them? That is all of them. This one here is just the cutest little thing. Which one? This one right here. Look at that little face. <laughs> Oh, it's like an owl. <laughs> I know. And yeah, she's all furred. So, I'm curious. So, the inventory 
that's what Kimberly's reading now, from this particular um, breeder, my pet chicken is where these come from, tells us what's in um, that box. What's in there, Kimberly, in this, in this shipment? We have one of these. This one is very uniquely colored, um, and the way she's... Done. She's big, too. I believe she's the silvered pencil rock. She's big, too. So, but... Yeah, we don't know. They kind of pretty. they kind of look alike when they're this small. Yeah, but, but she's, but as she's they, just, she's very unique looking. She's the, the only one we have of her. So I'm thinking she's probably the silver penciled rock. In the first month, um, they will fully feather out, so we'll get a much better idea five weeks from now what they're going to look like as an adult bird. They literally look like fully feathered out um, adults, but only 25 percent of the size. So. They look like little tiny velociraptors from from uh, Jurassic Park running around the, the coop. And the more you handle them, handle them, the um, more they become accustomed to people. And you can actually just walk up to them, and they'll just um, lay right down and let you pick them right up. And yeah, my family so. calls me the chicken whisperer because I've got several of the hens in the very first generation that we have, so they're approaching three years old. Um, they will just walk right up to me. I take a, a little handful of mealworms and they run right up to me and squat down. I pick them up, sit them on my lap, and, and, and they eat. So I told you. So what we got in this bin are the ones that we just received today. So we've installed those. And then we have this other, uh, this other stock tank. These are ones from last week. So if you follow on our customer group um, for La La Farm, and you know that we got 130 of them. Um, or how many? 100 and... 100 and five last week 104. 104 last week those are in that other tank so they're older than this group by um, exactly seven days so Kimberly's gonna take one of those out of that tank and then come on to her kind of show you what they what they look like the size difference in just in just a week I'll try and grab the same breed. close the lid up they're starting to fly come out here today and one of them standing up on top of the sweeter heater in that in that uh, in that tank okay. so if you can see her she's got feathers already see how her feathers are they'll fan right out so what you have here this bird is is these are feathers so she is nine days old she's even got tail she's feathers already, coming she's in. already starting to feather out on her wings after just nine days so we're starting to kind of see what she is she's got Tail feathers, feathers on her tail and she's okay. trying to fly so if she were to let her go she's gonna she's flying she down into that thing yeah. she's yeah so she's already so, kind of feisty and this one right here this, this is little from, fuzzy baby this is, is the same breed from this week from this week so that's just one week's difference uh, in terms of the size and maturity of these birds so they mature very very quickly so she's just got little tiny so, tips for feathers right here and no tail feathers at all. And she's only a week older, and the size is significantly different. Feathered out in the tail and the wings. So they, they, they start getting their feathers very, very quickly. And uh, like I said, within a month, we will be releasing that tank, where Kimberly's getting into now. We'll be releasing those birds into the new uh, coop. Um, should be in about three weeks we'll release those into that coop um, right now we're putting the roof on it so that should be done if not this weekend it should be done next weekend um, so both tanks are set up exactly the same so we've got the feeder on this end and this is a feeder that that we get at tractor supply um, any any probably get it online at Amazon um, and we just fill this about takes them about you know, this many birds takes, it will take them about a week to empty that feeder. Um, and on this end, we have the waterer. And this waterer, basically, they'll empty that in about a day. Um, uh, two days, they drink a lot of water when they're, when they're first maturing. And um, they grow very, very rapidly. So. These ones, they're already running around again. They're only, these were hatched out on Monday of this week. They're already running, but the ones in the other tank are already beginning to fly inside of there.
So within a month, by the time they're ready to be released out of that tank, they will be, they will be uh, ready to get out of there because they will be really cramped because uh, they're going to look like little tiny, little tiny partridge. Um, so here's, here's Chewy. He's trying to figure out what's going on with this, with this mess. So he's over here seeing what's going on with the chickens. I just got this one for you. This is a specialty bird that Rick wanted that we ordered. And I just wanted you to see her yeah, this wings. Is a, this is a golden lace wine dot. And we've never had one of these. And if you look at her wings, um, they have silver lace. Gold along, lace. Or gold lace, I'm sorry. Along the wings. They're just really beautiful. We've never had one of these before. We have um, a silver and a gold this time. And this time we got a silver and a gold wine dot. Um, they're kind of a specialty bird. Um, what we're trying to do is add some variety to our color selection. Um, we have, I think out of both of these uh, sets, we have uh, about 15 to 20 um, Americanas or Easter Eggers. Uh, and they are the green and blue egg layers. We don't, we've, we've never had an Americana that lays a blue egg. They're always um, just the, the green ones. So hopefully we get one that will lay a uh, blue egg. Do we ever had a blue egg layer? We got about a dozen what's called olive eggers, which will lay a kind of literally an olive colored egg. Um, so should offer a lot more variety than what we've had in our egg selection in the past with uh, uh, adding this group. In addition, by mid-February, uh, egg production right now is pretty limited. We're getting about uh, eight to nine dozen a week because the adult hens are going into their molt season. Uh, production really slows down during that period, but by mid first to second week of February, that should really be picking up. Um, uh, and that's about the time that these girls will begin laying. It's about four months, four to six months, depending upon the breed, but the first ones should start right around mid-February. Um, some of the ones, the Marins, they take a little bit longer. Those are going to be six to seven months. The Americanas, uh, the Delawares, the um, uh, Australorps, and the Andalusians are about four months. Those are among the earliest layers. So we should be up around nine to ten dozen a day, um, hopefully by the end of February, uh, early March. Um, and full production of probably 10 to 15 dozen per day by summer. Um, right now we can't uh, keep enough in stock of, of the uh, farm fresh eggs. Uh, we sell them every Monday. We sell everything that we've been able to gather for the past week. So uh, it's pretty quick. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video. Oh, one more thing. Huh? Just to um, give you a little bit more foundation too. When we put our chicks down, we put them down on um, pine shavings, but we make sure we use the extra large pine shavings because if not, they get confused. If you use the finer shavings. Yeah, show them the difference between the, the shavings and the food. If, if we you, use... If you use a finer shaving, they confuse grab it. Grab some food. Oh, okay. Never mind. They, <laughs> they, they confuse it. Um, yeah, we learned that with so. our very first batch of chicks. Um, get the larger shavings versus... Uh, the sawdust, the sawdust is cheaper, um, but the pine shavings, they will not mistake that as food. They run around it, they'll poop in it, but they're not going to try to eat it. Um, this is a, what's called a crumble, a chick uh, grower crumble that we get uh, non-GMO um, and uh, uh, organic from Tractor Supply. It's the only kind of food we use. Um, once the first egg is laid out of any of these, or any of these chicks, we will then transition from the, uh, from the grower crumble to the roasted non-GMO, um, non-GMO and organic feed that we, uh, buy from, uh, S&M feeds, uh, in, uh, eastern, uh, I guess it would be central eastern Georgia. Um, so we have that, we buy that special order. Um, because the hens really like it and it's a really, really great quality grain product um, that, the, that the adult hens get. So they get no uh, genetically modified uh, food, uh, non, they get no non-organic food, and most of the 
nutrition they get is through our compost bin and just natural foraging that they do throughout the yard. These two bins of chicks um, have a very specific purpose. They will be foraging uh, in the pastures uh, with the goats. Goats produce a lot of poop uh, and with that they produce um, a lot of parasitic worms. So the chicken's job is to uh, basically gain their protein from, uh, from the parasites that they are able to pick out of the pasture uh, from the poop uh, of the goats. Um, let me... Pine shavings that are in here now, um, as they uh, soil the pine saving, shavings, instead of cleaning it out, you know, taking 50 birds out of here to clean this out would be really difficult. So what we do is we just continuously build up by adding clean layers on top. Um, yeah, we'll once just... we move them out into the coop um, permanently, then all of these shavings and any of the, so the, the soiling that they've done um, in this temporary holding pan will uh, go into our compost as well. Yeah. And then it's the same thing, we use a, um, we use a litter method in, in, in this coop that we're building and we'll and in the original coop that we have for the for the adult hens now. Um, we built that one about three years ago. And it's a litter system, meaning that we don't clean it out, we basically build it up. Um, and they will go in there and scratch that for parasites. And there's really very little smell to it. And the only smell doesn't come from, from chicken waste. It actually comes from eggs that, that the adult hens have pecked for one reason or another. Um, sometimes they get a bad egg and they know that and they will naturally go in there and peck uh, that egg to break it open and then they eat the contents. Um, chickens are, are really in incredible animals, incredible birds I should say. So Kimberly's got her hand down there letting these little new chicks, three day old chicks, eat out of her hand. That one right there I believe is a blue andalusian. This one? Yep. Yeah. And that's my favorite bird out of all of the ones we've got. I think with this group, we'll have close to 18 different breeds, and the Blue Andalusian is by far my favorite. Um, they're just very docile, and they're just natural leaders of the herd. Um, the top three are the top three uh, adult hens that we have on the farm right now. In terms of just dominance and pecking order, all three of the top are all three of our Andalusian uh, adult hens. Um, they're the first ones out of the coop in the morning, they're the first ones to eat, they're the first ones in the compost pile, and nobody else challenges them. Um, you know, just like most animals in the animal kingdom, chickens have a very specific pecking order, um, as do our goats. And um, so, it's pretty interesting. So I'm going to show you, show you really quick uh, our, new, our new chicken coop. I'm going to show you real quick our new chicken coop. So this is right off of our goat barn. So we've got um, goats on both sides. So this is one of our breeding pastures right now that we've got, I think, five or six uh, goats uh, uh, being exposed to one of our bucks in this pen. These are the does that were not breeding. Here's Sasa here wondering, you know, why am I bothering her? And I've got uh, some more out out in the out in that pasture that these are ones that are not being bred for one reason or another this year. So off the back of or on the other side of the goat barn, we have our other set of does that are being exposed to our other buck. If you saw last week's video um, of the 4-H uh, show, this is Pretty Pearl right here. Um, Pretty Pearl's kind of in in shock right now because she's not uh, she's not being uh, spoiled. spoiled any longer she's in with real goats now um, so these are some of the other does that are being exposed to Einar um, which is our Yarl. second our second I'm sorry Yarl uh, he's the really filthy dirty one because goats that are in rut male goats that are in rut pee all over themselves so you can see all of them look really nice until you get to that really nasty one in the back. That's Jarl the Buck, and he just smells rancid. And then you got in the foreground there, uh, that is Bruno, our junior livestock guardian dog. So Bruno is what, five months old, four months old? Six months, Six months old. 
Uh, he's 100% Akbosh. He stays in here with Jarl. Jarl keeps him in check and in, and in large part is training him. But I digress very quickly. So now you kind of got a layout of, of how the barn is laid out. On the back of this goat barn is really the whole back wall is going to be the barn, the new barn chicken coop. So the entrance will be this door here, but right now we've got that. I gotta take off two carabiners to get to it, so I'm not gonna do that. So I'll go through the side door. So this will be our new chicken coop, which is about 80%. Is up and here we are greeted by our senior livestock guardian dog. This is Betsy and uh, she is a 50% Great Pyrenees, 50% uh, Karachikan and she is just an incredible dog. Um, sleeps all day and protects all night. She is never, she's roaming all night long and barking much to the chagrin of our neighbors. But here is, this is the, this is the this is the new chicken coop. So the only birds that will be in here uh, will be our, our laying hens, um, except for the first two generations. We're gonna try to see if we can migrate them back here. I don't know if we'll be able to or not, but we're gonna try. Um, if we can, great. If not, then uh, um, we're gonna keep them up front uh, and use that both for a front end laying nest or laying coop uh, for the older hens and uh, also for our meat birds. That's where the meat birds will be, uh, will be um, grown out is up there. So what you see is on each end. So we got the, the chicken coop will be in the end on both ends. We've got a little bit more loafing shed uh, for the pastures for the goats. Um, so that's it for this video. I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed this, uh, kind of taking a look at what uh, uh, what our new chicks, uh, what kind of chicks we are, how we get those installed. Um, kind of maybe you got some ideas on your own of, of how you might want to do that. Um, hope you enjoyed the tour of the of what will be the new chicken coop within the next month or so, uh, when those birds will be installed into that new coop. Um, if you enjoyed the video make sure you hit a give us a thumbs up um, we're trying to build traffic through uh, through our YouTube site uh, give us a thumbs up if you uh, hit that bell you can uh, make sure you get uh, announcements when uh, new videos are dropped down um, uh, just if you got any if you got any messages any comments make sure you drop those down there as well um, Give us a holler if you've got any questions or, or, or things that uh, you might want to ask us. Uh, Lala at thelalafarm.com or just using, um, uh, just using the comment section uh, on the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Be well and uh, see you on the next video.